Our worship today will be following the movements in Psalms of Laments, which is appropriate for the season of Lent. Lament is the most common theme uh, or poetry found in the Psalms. These movements will be woven throughout our prayers, our readings, and songs as we worship together. More briefly, we will address the Lord. We will register a complaint. We will have a request of what we would like to have done. And then we will affirm our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you please stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to continually, where is your God? Join me in singing. Psalm number 553. As you, Lord, you say, where two or three of us are gathered, you are there with us. 
So we know, Lord, that you are here with us. We ask that you would guide our thoughts, our tongues, and our actions. May we learn what it is that you would have us to be and to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Psalm 13 is a psalm of David. He prayed for deliverance from his enemies. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemies be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemies will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trust in your steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Would the children come forth for the children's story? Now, are you right-handed or left-handed? Which hand do you use the most? Right? Well, I would like you to put your hand out here, your right hand, okay? Now, let's send the... Now leave it like that, okay? Could I have your other hand, honey? Oh no, that's your right hand. Boy, she knows which hand it is. All right, I want you to stick your thumb up there, yeah. Okay. Here. Emma, hold your hand down. Here, come on over here, honey. I'm going to put this on your hand, and I'm going to put this right here, okay? Can you let that on there? Yep, that's a good thing. Okay, now, I want you to pick those up. With your, no, no. Oh, that's a good thing. That's a, that is good. Now, I want you to take the tape off. Take your tape off. Whoops, I don't want to scratch you. I put that on there pretty good, didn't I? And now pick up the bottle. Pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, do you know that God made you? And he made your thumb. Yeah. And he made it work just the way it does. Yeah, yeah. I, to me, it is just so amazing that anybody could think to make a thumb. He must be a pretty smart guy if he can make a thumb, huh? And to make it work. And make it so easy. <laughs> That's right. Make it so easy to pick things up. What would you do without your thumb? Huh? What if we took your thumbs away? It would be harder to do things, wouldn't it? So God made us. He made us so wonderfully. And he gave us so many intricate parts. He gave us fingers and toes and ears to hear, and each part has a special place. And did you know that God made you, and he made you a special place? He made you to do a special job, and you need to figure out what your job is. 
okay? So that you can do it. Okay, that's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have made these children, each individual. We ask that you would watch over them and help them to realize what it has, what job you have for them to do in this world, starting at right now and as they grow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may take your bottle of water with you. Take it, yeah, you may take it with you. <laughs> As we prepare again for, for, for prayer, I invite you to sing with me, Out of the Depths. I believe the words are in your bulletin for this. So. God, as we, as we come before you, we, we pray that, that with your help we can see and hear the honesty of the psalmists and other writers of Scripture. And as we hear their honesty, we may be encouraged to bear our own hearts before you, to know that it is okay to express struggle, it's, it's, it's okay to express frustration or anger or pain, or even despair. And indeed, we pray that you would teach us of that, that healing journey of honesty and naming the, the concerns and the burdens of our hearts, making our requests plain and clear before you. And under all, all of our prayer life, we pray that you would create the foundation of, of faith, of hope, hope for a better future. Oh well, God, we uplift to you those who are, who are undergoing and battling and, and wrestling with cancer with the treatments for cancer, with the diagnoses of cancer and, and the struggle of that illness. We pray, O oh God, for those who are undergoing other struggles with illness, with the effects of older age and 
and the effects of many years of hard work and the effects of strokes and and other diseases like Parkinson's and 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 the list is long, O oh Lord. We pray that with your help you continue to hope for a better future. All those who are sick, who are ill. We pray for your blessing, for your healing on all those who are ill. We also pray for, for peace, for peace in our world, for peace in our relationships, and for shalom. Shalom from your heart to ours, that we might have all that we need to live well, to be well, and to be in good relationships with others. We also give you thanks. Thanks for neighbors who are helpful. Thanks for successful surgeries. And we give you thanks for, for milestones, birthdays, and celebrations. Oh God, help us again. Help us to be honest before you, knowing that you arrive at just the right moment to lead us into new, a, new, a new future, a new hopeful a new hopeful path. Oh God, we raise all these before you. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Gospel reading today comes from Luke 22, 39 to 42. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. I came upon the idea of lament this week from the story of, of Hagar, and I'm going to get into that a little later, but the stories from, from the scripture, if you think about um, the stories from, from Genesis on through the Bible, there are so many times Whenever we hear about people, when they get to their limit, they get to the end of their selves, their limit, and, and then they pour their hearts out to God, and God shows up. God arrives in just that right moment. That you can think of the story of Abraham. You can think of the story of, of Hagar, of Samuel, David, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Even Elijah, out in the wilderness, 40 days of fasting, and, and at just the right time, God arrives to answer the prayer. And it seems as though it, there's a connection for me between this prayer of lament that over 60 psalms of the 150, so lament is the largest form of, of poetry in the, in the psalms, It seems to me there's a connection between that pouring our hearts out and our, our service of anointing, where God says to tell it like it is. If you're happy, sing praises. But if you're sick, call for elders to pray over you. Make your concerns known before God, and God will bring come with healing. More than Anything the Psalms of Lament teach us about honesty, honesty 
before God. That's appropriate for the season of Lent. You know, one of the things I've noticed is in the lectionary readings, especially in the daily lectionary readings from the Book of Common Prayer, the Psalms on Sundays are all full of joy. You have Psalm 95, you have Psalm 100. They're, they're Psalms, hymns of joy and praise for the Lord's Day to celebrate the resurrection. But, but maybe once in a while we need to, to step back and remember the other way of praying, the prayer, the prayer of lament. Psalm 13, I, I, and I chose that because it's such a simple and, and clear outline, you know? The psalmist begins just saying, how long, how long, oh God, how long will you hide your face from me? How long are you going to wait to answer my prayers, you know? Another, another psalm I read this week is 22, which is connected with Jesus, and, and it seems that there's this special connection because he quotes it from the cross where he says, oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After addressing God, after being honest, the psalmist then turns to saying what's wrong. And in 13, he says, how long must I bear this pain in my soul? How long must I have this sorrow in my heart that lasts all day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? And then a little later, the psalmist turns to the concrete answer, the concrete request. God, consider what I'm asking. Answer me, O God. Give light to my eyes, or I'm going to die. My enemy will say, ah, I have prevailed, and my foes will rejoice because I'm shaken. He simply wants his life to be turned around. And for he, want, he wants to have life. He wants to have victory over the enemies. He wants God's help. And then, and then finally, but I've trusted. I've trusted in your love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. There's almost always that twist of affirmation, affirmation of faith, affirmation of what God has done for the writer in the past, and, and a statement of praise. And sometimes when you read through the Psalms, the change is so abrupt. It's like all of a sudden you go from the complaint and the request to, but I'm going to praise you, Lord. And it's hard to follow that sometimes for me, honestly. I want to tell you again about the story of Hagar. You remember Hagar. She was the slave of Sarah. Sarah had been promised a child by God. Abraham, Abram, and Sarah were promised, your descendants will be as many as the stars. But they were getting older. They were getting older, and Sarah realized it was not going to happen in any natural way because she was just too old. And because of her, I don't want to say impatience, but because she was having some concerns about how this was ever going to happen, she said, hey, Abraham, maybe I ought to just, maybe I ought to just have kids through my slave, sixth Hagar. And so that's what Abraham did. And the next thing you know, Hagar is expecting. And as soon as she was, as soon as the, the news became clear that she was going to have a child, the, the relationship between Sarah and Hagar went south. It went sour very quickly. Hagar got a little bit not humble anymore. And Sarah got upset. And the next thing you know, Hagar is running off, running off into the wilderness. Imagine Palestine. You can picture the wilderness. She's gone off by herself. She's, she's pregnant and alone. There are animals. There are threats from people and just from being on your own in the wilderness. And in that place of, of despair, 
God comes. And he says, Abraham, what are you doing? Where are you coming from and where are you going? And she tells the story. She pours out her complaint. This is what's happened to me, O oh God. And the Lord says, well, I want you to go back. And I want you to be a good servant to Sarah. And I want you to be faithful. And everything goes well for, for years until Sarah has her own child, Isaac. And then this, the relationship goes south again. And Sarah is jealous of, of Hagar and Ishmael. And so Ish, Sarah, uh, she goes to Abraham. And this time Abraham sends her off with some provisions. This is a hard story. Hard story on so many levels. Hagar goes with Ishmael into the wilderness again, and she is at the end. They've used all their food and water, and she puts her child under a, a, a bush, and she goes off far enough that she won't hear his crying and his suffering. And there again, God comes. God comes and, and speaks to Hagar and promises that her children will be as numerous as, as this, I'm not sure the illustration, but she will have many, many children, a great multitude of kids. And after the, after the in exchange with God, her eyes are open and she sees a spring close by. The story, or the lesson from the story, is that when we get to the end, when we get to the place where we have nowhere else to turn, God invites us to be honest, to express our desperation, to just be honest. And the words can be as coarse or as rough as you see in the Psalms. Just, just be honest. And when we get to that point where we're not holding anything back, it's the moment, it's the moment, that the healing and the hope begin. Coming to the place is, has been the, the journey of Lent. Come to the place where we can, with Jesus, take up the cross and be renewed in our desire to follow him. There was something, this morning I, I got the cross up here with help from Aaron, but I wanted to wait until the beginning of worship to put it up. Because, you know, putting the cross up as an act of worship is just different than putting it up whenever the two of us are here by ourselves and, and we're not really thinking about it. In just a little less than two weeks, we'll come to Good Friday and the crucifixion, the remembering of Jesus' journey remembering of the suffering. And for the, for, the, for the subject of a lament, it's in the garden. The second passage that was read is, is from the garden, the night before Jesus was betrayed, the night before he was killed. He's praying. He's praying lament. He's saying to God, listen, God, if there is any way to avoid this, if there's any way we can do this a different way, but not my will, yours be done. I'm sure that we've had those moments. I'm sure each of us has. Moments when we got to the place where it was, how long, oh God? Why have you forsaken me, oh God? Oh God, I thirst for you, like, like the deer thirst for streams of water. The invitation from Psalms, the invitation from the example of Christ, the invitation from Scripture is 
to be honest, to be clear about how you're feeling, and to make your request clear. What do you want God to do for you? The question that Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And then to affirm your faith. I believe in God. I believe in the power of God. I believe God is with me on this journey. I included the insert for you to use as a, as a, as a devotional exercise this week. Using Psalm 13, just as a model, to write your own lament, to write your own, and maybe, maybe you're at a joyful moment, and this isn't fit for you at this time. Remember, remember a time when you may have had despair or struggle before God. Use that as your, as your exercise to draw close, to be honest, to express and to request before God. Memory this takes me back to that I've probably talked about before was in the Cal stable many years ago after a, a second miscarriage when I just found myself weeping and praying, Oh God, why won't you give us a little one? Lent is the time to re remember to re-examine, to, to be honest, to lament with Jesus. To open ourselves to the healing presence that we celebrate on Easter. Let's take a moment for prayer. This is based on Psalm 137. By the waters, the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung up our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. When facing adversity, remember us, O Lord. When we stumble and fall, remember us, O Lord. When our enemies take joy in our suffering, remember us, O Lord. When we are mistreated, remember us, O Lord. Keep us from repaying evil with evil, remember us, O Lord. Happy are those who trust in the Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. I invite you uh, to sing with me number 340. Trust, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise and to know the same. Jesus, oh, for grace.
to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me beneath the healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, and from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. When you find yourself desperate, desperate for help in getting through whatever the experience or struggle might be, may you be blessed to know that it is in the hardest moments of life that God arrives. God arrives to see us, to hear our stories, our laments, and to offer us a new vision, new direction. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.